I've always loved philosophy, or I should say, to be more accurate, I've always pretended to love philosophy. Um, you know, obviously being Greek, uh, we, we borrowed the name Socrates uh, in the city. Uh, originally, you probably wouldn't know this, it was going to be Donald Trump in the city. Uh, but he, thre he threatened to sue us, but, uh, you know, as long as it was a fame, I just wanted a famous name, so that's why we picked Socrates. We really don't care about philosophy. But um, I have to say, in my freshman year in college, you know, in a survey course philosophy, I, I never really got much past Thales. Okay, the three educated people can leave. Uh, yeah, by the sound of the crickets, I can tell that, uh, that most of you never got two Thales. Uh, Thales, for those of you who didn't know, was a pre-Socratic. But don't feel bad if you didn't know he was a pre-Socratic, because I'm pretty sure that Thales didn't know it himself. But anyway, every now and again, you know, to educate ourselves, we have some brilliant philosopher, and tonight, Dr. Westfall is the best we could do, and I apologize in advance. Dr. Westfall, are you here? You're still here. Good, I'm glad, because people have left during those introductions for many, for many reasons, many reasons. Um, okay. Merrill Westfall is a distinguished professor of philosophy at Fordham University. His research and writing are focused upon modern continental philosophy with a particular emphasis on the historical development and systematic integrity of individual thinkers, their dialogue and debate with one another, and their contributions to the philosophy of religion, political philosophy, and aesthetics. And by the way, I'm doing my PhD on that sentence. I just wanted to tell you. Uh, he's also served as executive co-director of the Society for Phenomenology and Existential Philosophy. Are you the only member of that and you gave yourself that title? I can't believe the very idea. Executive co-director. There's two directors. There's two directors. Just imagine. Just imagine. There's two directors and one member. Um, that's unbelievable. Uh, he's also a recipient of the Aquinas Medal presented by the University of Dallas. He's lectured widely around the world. He's the author of many books, including two studies of Hegel, three studies of Kierkegaard, and four studies of the 1970s mime duo Shields and Yarnell. That's very counterintuitive, uh, Dr. Westfall, I have to say. Uh, because Dr. Westfall is having some serious back issues, which the surgeon is gonna remedy soon, he's gonna be sitting on a bar stool here, so that's why he's going to be doing that. But let me tell you, we are very excited to have Dr. Westfall here. Please join me in giving a warm Socrates welcome to Dr. Merrill Westfall. Eric has always thought of himself as a stand-up comedian. I'm a sit-down tragedy. And perhaps some of you too, once upon a time, did Philosophy 101 and encountered Socrates and his most famous saying, that the unexamined life is not worth living. I hope Eric won't excommunicate me immediately if I call attention to the irony uh, that associates itself with that statement. It is probably the most unexamined statement in the history of Western <laughs> philosophy. Socrates was just wrong. But self-examination can be a very good thing, even if it isn't absolutely essential to the good life. And especially at Passover season, if one is Jewish, or during Lent, if one is Christian. Lent is a lot longer than Passover. Uh, apparently, the assumption is Christians have more to repent of. <laughs> it is sometimes rational to believe things that are false. A six-year-old child who believes what um, his or her parents tell about the tooth fairy is not acting irrationally. Truth is no defense against suspicion. If somebody comes along and is suspicious of the motives that lead me to hold certain beliefs, or suspicious of the function that they play in my life, uh, it's no defense for me to try to say, yeah, but they're true. But you see, Marx tells a story that's only half the story. On the one hand, religious people use their religion to perpetuate social injustice, glaringly shamelessly. On the other hand, adherence to the same religion, we're talking primarily here about Christianity in, in all of these cases, adherence of the same religion were the ones who played a leading role in overturning those social injustices. And if believers take Jesus seriously, when he says, worry about the log that's in your own eye before you worry about the speck that's in somebody else's eye, 
we'll worry about the part of Marx that's true before we worry about the part that he leaves out.